Hey guys, today I want to talk a little about this camera. It's uh, the Canon EOS M50 DSLR camera. And this is my first uh, DSLR camera I used to do astrophotography. And I'm still using it and yeah. But it's not about this camera, but it's also about uh, yeah main accessory you will need to start astrophotography with um, cheap and simple um, stuff. So enjoy. But before I want to talk about the main topic of this video, I want to thank you for watching my um, YouTube videos and also for all the kind comments and so on. And um, yeah, especially uh, with regard to my last video in which I compared the James Webb Space Telescope uh, to the Hubble Space Telescope and the uh, magnitude limit. And yeah, the response was overwhelming for me and for my yeah, small or tiny uh, YouTube channel. Um, I really liked seeing how much um, you watched this video and also commented this, this video. So thank you and also um, hello and welcome to my new but also for my older YouTube uh, subscribers and um, thank you. But let's talk about the main topic of this video. So this is my Canon EOS M50 DSLR camera I'm filming with at the moment and it's really a nice um, camera I think. It's a beginner DSLR camera and it costs around 500 uh, US dollars or euros, let's say. Uh, I bought it together with a kit lens, with a 15 to 45 millimeter kit lens and it has a maximal uh, aperture of f3.5. So very nice. But it's really not very useful for astrophotography in my eyes. Um, I mean, I would not generalize it. I mean, I'm still using it for astrophotography. But if you have the choice, I would not um, buy it anymore. And here's why. Actually, for me, there's only one major disadvantage with this camera. And the disadvantage is it has no internal intervalometer or you cannot connect an external one. As a beginner, maybe you will ask what is an intervalometer? An intervalometer uh, tells the camera, maybe external device or a software on the camera, um, tells the camera, um, yeah, maybe go and um, make a picture every two seconds for one second exposure time, or maybe do the 10 pictures, or maybe do this whole series for one hour or whatever. So it's a yeah, shutter release program, let's say, or device with um, different um, yeah, time programs and so on you can set. And this is very nice. At the moment, uh, what I do, I connect my um, smartphone with this camera and then I have a Canon app and then I press release, 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 make a picture, picture, picture. <laughs> okay. And this is, of course, it's not very nice, right? To press, I mean, either you press on the camera or you press with your uh, remote device, which I really would highly recommend not to have any um, shaking in your camera. But this is not very nice. And so, I'm always quite limited to the number of pictures, right? So if you have a, maybe let's say, not such a um, light powerful or a light collecting powerful lens or camera, uh, it's always good to make um, more pictures. Maybe also longer exposure times. But if you have, if you don't have the device, you have to press, and this is really not so fun. <laughs> so um, my first tip is, um, if you want to buy a camera for astrophotography, buy one with an internal intervalometer, or where you have a, a connection to your um, camera where you can connect the inter external uh, intervalometer. That's very important, and this will help 
you a lot. The second tip I want to give you is um, to use a fast SD uh, memory card. Uh, this is um, 170 megabyte per second memory and it has a 128 uh, gigabyte memory on it. And this is very nice. Maybe why? now you will ask, why do I need such a fast SD card, memory card? And let's have an example. Let's say you want to make uh, photos of the ISS during uh, moon transit. And what you do in these cases, you have um, quite short uh, shutter speed that the ISS has no blur, but it's really many single pictures. And yeah, the ISS uh, is very fast. So sometimes you have only one second or less to maybe several maybe three or four seconds for the moon transit. And what you do is here, um, you press the shutter release and there's a burst mode. That means uh, the camera makes many, many, many pictures within one second. You can set this on your camera, whatever you want. And so the shutter speeds are very fast. So the camera has to save those images very, very fast on your SD card. Of course, there's also an internal memory, but um, it's not unlimited, right? So here, for example, it's, and in general, I would say it's very nice to have a fast and of course, big enough uh, memory SD card for your camera. And the third, tip I want to give you is um, maybe um, try to use such a heater band. Uh, here's a heating element inside and you can connect it to your, um, map, um, to your power station or yeah, battery. And you also have a, um, you can set uh, here in this model, with this model you can use uh, three different um, um, yeah, heating stages and this is very nice because when you are filming or making pictures in the cold um, without a heater um, your lens, camera lens or maybe also telescopes um, will have condensation on their lens and this causes um, the picture to be um, much darker and first you will lose the dimmest objects and i also made a video about this in another video so here you can see it so as you can see with time the picture gets darker and darker and this is especially painful when you want to capture quite dim objects here you have a direct comparison So use a heater. <laughs> the fourth tip I want to give you is to use uh, several batteries for your DSLR camera. Especially in the cold, uh, they, will, they will not last very long. And even better than batteries is to use a battery dummy. So here you connect your um, external um, power cable to the, to the dummy and the dummy is inside uh, your camera instead of a uh, normal uh, battery. And this is very helpful. The fifth tip I want to give you is um, to use such a box, uh, dust 
proof box where you really tightly close your things and store your things, especially uh, lenses and so on. And yeah, I highly recommend using this because you have dust everywhere and you don't want to have dust on your um, sensor when you switch your lens to an ad adapter or something. And I think it's also, uh, it's always very helpful to use this. Yeah. Another very helpful thing is um, to use such a, um, salt uh, bags, I think that's salt or silica inside, which prevents um, yeah, wetness or um, high humidity in this box. And associated with this tip, I also highly recommend to use a um, cleaning tissue, something like this. <laughs> where you can clean your lens or maybe also a camera and so on. Very helpful. And my sixth tip is to use such a yeah, flat screen or light screen or painting screen, however you call it, uh, in order to generate your flat images. And in this video, I already explained what uh, flat screens or flat images are and how you can generate it. So, so just shortly in general you use a method that's called white t-shirt method. It's very simple. So you just cover your le camera lens or your telescope with a white t-shirt and you expose it, expose it uh, to a quite um, bright light, for example the sky. Um, bright sky of course, not so cloudy and so on. And then you take a white t-shirt or the white parts of your t-shirt and then you put it around your telescope or your camera objective like I show you here. What I recognize and I also explained this in the same video is um, there are um, some inconsistency when you do this and you also always dependent on the weather right so now it's snowing and you cannot do you could not really do this and so on. And that's really nice to be under independent. And so you have the flat screen and you just um, cover it here. You cover your, yeah, your camera lens or your telescope with this. And of course, first you turn it on like this <laughs> and off and on. Off and on. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the nice thing is you have a USB connection here and you can just use your um, power, power station or however you call it, battery and so on. And you just um, cover this or your lens and then you can make your images. And I really accomplished uh, nice results using this uh, flat screen. And my last tip, optional tip, is um, to buy or to use a special uh, DSLR uh, camera uh, clip-in, it's called clip-in filter, uh, for example, yeah, light pollution filter, but there are also other uh, things. And I say it's optional, of course, it's all optional, but this is, uh, the, fil the filters are um, uh, quite expensive. I mean, it depends which one you use, but especially for my Canon EOS M50 DSLR camera, um, one um, light pollution filter is about, yeah, 100, 150, more 150 euros. And I don't really like it. I mean, you have to uh, push it on your, or press it into your camera on top of the sensor. Yeah, I don't like it really to have my fingers so close to the sensor and so on and uh, yeah. And the other thing is, um, as I mentioned, I'm not 100% um, happy with this camera just because of the missing uh, intervalometer, just because of this. And I will anyway shift to another camera. And spoiler, um, there will be another kind of sensor 
um, yeah, end of this year or beginning of next year. So don't miss it. And uh, yeah, if you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up, uh, write me comments and um, yeah, maybe if you don't want to miss uh, new things, um, yeah, please consider to subscribe to my channel and um, yeah, I thank you for watching and see you next time. Clear skies.